Samantha Lewis with Cambridge Health Tech Institute, and today I'm speaking with Dr. Laszlo Radvanyi, who is a professor of melanoma medical oncology at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. Thank you, Laszlo, for taking the time to speak with us today. You work primarily in the area of T-cell therapy, specifically with tumor-infiltrating lymphocytes. What was it that made you choose to study TILS? Well, I, first of all, when I was a youngster in, in graduate school, I was very enthralled by the initial data and work by Steve Rosenberg at the National Cancer Institute, um, you know, through news stories, etc., and reading articles about his work on TILS and melanoma, and I thought that that was an amazing approach to uh, treating cancer, and I was always interested in that and became very interested in tumor immunology during my PhD at the University of Toronto in Canada. And uh, I did various uh, postdocs and jobs, and then I, I ended up at MD Anderson and got a chance to work in TIL therapy with Dr. Patrick Hu, who's you know worked with Steven Rosenberg for 14 years. And so TIL, I think, has a lot of advantages right now uh, over other therapies, other T-cell therapies, in that it has a broad specificity. And one of the huge excitements now in the field is, is, is the discovery that many of the T-cells infiltrating tumor that we can expand and treat patients actually recognize mutated antigens that are essentially just foreign antigens to the immune system in which the immune system doesn't have a tolerance against. And I think this is going to be a huge area that's going to take off not only for melanoma, which we're doing most, uh, most of the tumor infiltrating lymphocyte therapy now, but and also it'll be a, a, a huge door opening now into uh, our ability to use TILS to treat other types of cancers, especially uh, epithelial cancers, which, which have been a little bit refractory now. And so um, I'm very excited about that, you know, and especially because right now, you know, through our work and through the work of others, we've now developed better ways of expanding these cells, you know, to really, you know, um, sort of industrialize the uh, process of TIL expansion, um, oh, you know, where we can now take it outside of an academic center, put it into a commercial type scenario and treat thousands of patients. I think we're really poised to do that and it's really an exciting time to be in this field, not only of TILs but in other T-cell therapies as well. You mentioned a lot of the successes with TILs, but what are some of the challenges that you've had? Yes, definitely. I mean, you know, TILs have always been, you know, unfortunately considered uh, sort of a fringe type of um, treatment um, because of the necessity to, you know, isolate a tumor, cut up that tumor, and either create a single cell suspension to expand the TIL or, or, or to expand the T cells out of those tumors from, those, from small tumor fragments, like three to five millimeter tumor fragments. It's very labor intensive. It's, you know, sort of have to have a green thumb. And so it was, although the therapy as, as evidenced by the clinical results by Steve Rosenberg, our results at MD Anderson, Sheba Medical Center, and Moffitt Cancer Center, and other centers now in Europe, it's highly efficacious in metastatic melanoma, 50% response rates, durable remissions. Um, the problem is, is that most of the oncology community has considered it sort of this fringe type of you know, therapy that only a, you know, a few people can do and it's just relegated to a few academic centers that can also give the interleukin-2 therapy that's required after TIL infusion. But uh, so that's one of the challenges is to sort of um, industrialize the manufacturing or the expansion of these cells, which, and I think we're poised to do that. I mean, I don't have time to go into the details, but work in my lab and others' lab over the last 10 years have really developed um, better processes to expand these cells such that we can now envision closed bioreactor systems uh, even from the initial point of, of culturing these tumor fragments all the way up to the final expansion steps you know to generate the final infusion product so now we're really poised now with all of the um, you know understanding of t-cell biology and the understanding of manufacturing and how we can you know automate that and, and develop closed systems we're really poised with that the other issue with till therapy I think is that which is, which is, again, uh, an, a biological issue that's sort of plaguing the whole field of T-cell therapies. As we expand these cells, they tend to differentiate. The more the T-cells differentiate, the less proliferative capacity they have and the less ability they have to survive and persist long-term in the patient. It's really the persistence and long-term ability of these cells to keep on hacking away at these tumors and any new tumors or metastases that may arise, that's very, you know, very important because it's not just about clinical response, shrinking of a tumor quickly, like chemotherapy or some of the targeted therapies. It's about long-term durable control and long-term, you know, survival. That's 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 the key, and it requires the long-term persistence of these cells. So we have to sort of get better knowledge of sort of manipulating the signaling pathways. Um, 
uh, when we grow these tills to prevent their over differentiation so they can persist longer. But you know, there's various things that we're doing and I think we'll, we'll get there too. And I think genetic engineering right now with our knowledge of sort of memory stem cells and how we can actually de-differentiate and reprogram T cells, I think that's going to be a huge growth area in the next few years. Uh, work by Nicholas Restifo at the NCI especially has been you know, instrumental in uncovering this whole new world and how we can reprogram and you know, sort of de-differentiate T-cells to younger, more uh, pluripotent even type of cells. Uh, and I think that's going to hugely take off. And I think we can do that with TILS too as well uh, in the upcoming years. I think you've made it fairly clear with what you've already said that this is a rapidly expanding field. Now something that's been in the news a lot lately is the trials at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. I know that's not necessarily till related, but how do you see that affecting the field and how do you think the field should move forward from that? I think with everything, you know, uh, excitement has to be tempered with caution and um, sort of um, not rushing too quickly. I think, I think there's a huge excitement that was uh, potentiated by the, of course, the initial data that coming out of Carl June's lab at UPenn with the CD19 CAR T cells, which sort of catapulted a huge excitement because now we're actually poised to actually be able to cure cancer. And I think Carl, in, in some interviews, really made it very clear. And I think that, that, that he's absolutely right. And I think T cell therapies like this have a potential uh, of really curing cancer. But at the same time, because T cells, you know, are are very highly active, you know, um, they secrete cytokines, they, 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 they can cause inflammation and these cytokine, you know, storms as they are calling them, although it's sort of sad that they call it cytokine storm, but because it's different than, you know, toxic shock and there's other things that that term came from, but nevertheless, I think we have to be careful in that, you know, patients, especially with high tumor burden, in which you're infusing these cells that have a high capacity to expand even from a few T cells, we have to sort of be careful in, in learning how to control that. But I think with, you know, uh, care, in increased clinical care in, in you know, uh, mitigating these uh, inflammatory responses in these patients, I think we sh should be able to, you know, solve those issues. And I don't think it's going to be a showstopper at all. It, it's, it's a little bit of a hiccup. It's going to be, a, you know, uh, in, 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 um, in the field, but we have to pick up and move and, and, and move along and just again, um, just with other fields of T-cell therapy, we have to sort of, there's a huge, huge wave of excitement now. I mean, Forbes is, you know, publishing a, you know, front piece article with, uh, uh, on, you know, on, on Novartis's, you know, uh, endeavor to develop CAR T-cell therapies and things like that. So, like with every sort of wave of activity and, and excitement, we have to sort of temper that with some caution and always doing the right science and always letting the science rule and the data rule and not getting too over, you know, not falling in love with our systems too much. And so I, I think we'll get over it and I think right now with some of the new CAR T-cell therapy, uh, you know, constructs um, and, you know, ways of modulating the signaling and, you know, there's a whole new world out there now. We're now in the realm of genetic engineering T-cells and which are now have been proven safe and we can do it and I think we're now you know in a world in which we can regulate the strength of the signal of these T-cells the, the, the degree of co-stimulation when we give that co-stimulation uh, we can even develop inducible signaling molecules so I think I think you know we're just at the tip of the iceberg I think in terms of even the car technology and we're actually at the tip of the iceberg even with the tumor infiltrated lymphocyte technology and so you know T-cell therapies I think are here to stay and I think they're going to be, you know, as Carl June points out too in as many of his talks, is that it's going to now represent one of the main pillars of, 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 of oncology, uh, you, know, pr you know, really highly, as part of the highly, you know, personalized pre precision medicine um, of the future. And so, uh, you know, I, I, think, I think, you know, there's no problem. <laughs> I have no problem. I mean, it's unfortunate it happened, but it's just a wake-up call that we have to be careful. Exactly. So now I'm going to ask you to get your crystal ball out and, and predict the future. Do you think that therapies like this are going to be ready, as you said, you know, for prime time and, and real oncology treatments, you know, within the next five, ten years? What are your thoughts on that? Right. I mean, as I said before my, in, in the previous answer, I think T-cell therapies, cell therapies are, are, are now, uh, you know, the way of the future, you know. I think, you know, we've had, of course, uh, you know, the traditional therapies, you know, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and then targeted therapies have come in, which, which are highly efficacious and still will, will have a huge role, I think, in the, in, the, in the future as we get better idea of the driving mutations, driving mutations in cancer and how we can then target those pathways. 
And then we had antibody therapies, you know, at the checkpoint blockade for T-cells, anti-CTLA-4, ipilimumab, now anti-PD-1. So the next wave now, beyond the antibody therapy, of course we have antibody drug conjugates and things, like specific antibodies. The next wave, though, the next sort of step is cell therapies. And so I think we are now have stepped into that realm. We're here now. We've stepped into the lake or stepped into the pond or whatever. So I think we're, we're, we're here for the long haul. And so I envision T-cell therapies being an intricate part <clears throat> of sort of combination therapies that we will use in a sort of a treatment continuum for our cancer patients. So what's really exciting is that no longer are we just left with a few possible therapies for cancer patients. As I indicated also in my talk yesterday, you know, we envision treatment of cancer patients as, as, as a tool chest, as a toolbox, where the oncologist and the patient has options now to use not only, um, you know, perhaps chemotherapy, targeted therapy, but a whole slew of immunotherapies, which they can decide on based on the condition of that patient, you know, the situation, the immune competence of the patients and other biomarkers. So the way of the future is going to be this huge tool chest among which immunotherapy, both immunomodulatory antibodies as well as T-cell therapies will be a, will be a huge part. And, and also T-cell therapies can be combined with immunomodulatory antibodies. So we're looking at a situation where you know, we can combine sort of checkpoint blockade with T-cells, so there's going to be, you know, stay tuned for a number of trials that will be upcoming um, in TIL therapy too as well, where TIL therapy will be combined with ipilimumab or anti-CTLA-4 and combined with anti-PD-1, combined with um, other checkpoint blockade inhibitors as well as uh, targeted therapeutic drugs as well to sort of, you know, increase the, the, the response rates and, and the durable response rates. So I really see, you know, T-cell therapy as becoming an intricate part now of the whole treatment continuum, the whole toolbox, so to speak, now for the oncologist. And, um, you know, Ian, we have to solve the engineering problems, the production problems. Right now, you know, big pharma is getting interested finally in cell therapy before they were, like, not interested. Uh, because it's, they, they said, oh, it's never going to be, you know, viable commercially. But that's what they said about stem cell transplantation 30 years ago when they got started. They said, oh, it's never going to work. And now, you know, we've done our, you know, two millionth or so transplant now for stem cells. Um, and so I think right now we have a sort of a, 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 a an acid test, so to speak, with Novartis now, you know, trying to develop the CAR T cell therapies licensed out of UPenn. And, you know, Juno Therapeutics, for example, doing CAR. And, you know, we're, we're going to be trying to also develop TIL therapy now, take it to the next level, to FDA approval. So we'll see in the next few years whether the promise, you know, to industrialize and to get this out to the masses of patients will, will, uh, will, will materialize. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. And I've been Samantha Lewis with Cambridge Health Tech Institute, and that was Dr. Laszlo Radvanyi from MD Anderson. Mm -hmm.